Warriors, bold, brave, and beautiful, thank you so much for joining me uh, for a daily dose of encouragement. And uh, I should ask you, are you feeling, not feeling because you don't want to use the word feeling, but are you being and living boldly and bravely and beautifully? And beautiful is the inside first out. That's the only way you can be outside beautiful is when you're inside beautiful. So, um, so I wanted to ask you that. Are you bold, brave, beautiful warriors really living that out? Well, part of a daily dose of encouragement is encouraging you that I hope that I can do, um, encourage you to stay fierce in this walk in life. And so, um, that's why you're joining me and thank you so much for being a part of Women to Warriors and, uh, listening to our daily dose of encouragement. So if you reference the video we just did two days ago, it was on Monday, I, um, and we're, we're talking about the book of Galatians and I wanted to speak on the fruit of the spirit. So uh, there's nine fruits, fruit of the spirit, nine, you usually don't use the S, it's supposed to be fruit as one for the Holy Spirit. So, um, but there's nine. So we were going to start with it in order and I was just going to share with you different thoughts that God's revealing to me and things I'm experiencing. And obviously you can reflect on your own life and, and um, come with your own stories. But I just want to share with you through the different ones and how we can be better at using um, these beautiful gifts that God gives us with the Holy Spirit first because that's how we have, that's how we receive the fruit of the Spirit We have to receive the Holy Spirit and we receive the Holy Spirit This is going to be the outpour of what the Holy Spirit is is love. It's peace. It's patience. It's joy It's forbearance, which that's patience uh, kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control And so we're going to talk about love 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 love. I love love I just do. And I've used that word way too loosely. You know how you're like, oh, I love this. I love that. I love that. I've done that all, pretty much all my life. I'm really trying to uh, catch my tongue now and just say like, I like, I like, I like, I adore, I like. Really love should be expression for loving people or loving, um, you know, my animals. I love my huck, um, my, my golden retriever. But, you know, loving people, loving your family, loving um, everyone out here, you know, that I'm, you know, involved with in my life and world, right? We should be love, love, loving and using that for that. But too many times we've let that word digress into you love everything and then where is it <clears throat> when you want to love someone and when you want to give that love away it's like it's all zapped out of you so reading on the fruit of the spirit and walking in the fruit of the spirit is making sure that we are living this way and the first one we're going to talk about is love and i love love because my name mindy actually means love and so that puts a huge mark on my back <laughs> Because I need to be really extra, extra loving. <laughs> but um, yes, my name is Love, and I discovered that, gosh, I knew that as a kid because I, my mom had this um, beautiful calligraphy um, picture done with my name, and then it said what it meant, and so that's how I knew that. But uh, And so I really have to live up to that, I believe, you know, because God gave me hopefully this, well, I know he says we will have a, a different name in heaven, but the name that I have here, my parents gave me, and, and, and I believe I should live out you know, this warrior woman that I am and being, a, being using, um, being loving and, and loving everyone is my, is definitely one of my challenges and wonderful things I try to do every day. It's not perfect though. Let me tell you. Um, but, uh, so another wonderful way that God reminds me to stay loving too, because I do have my moments, I will admit, um, is I have, he shows me love in hearts, hearts everywhere. I see hearts in everything every day. Um, of some sort, uh, I get some kind of a reminder of it. And it is crazy how he just leaves these hearts for me. They could be in like soap suds, uh, as I'm washing my dishes, or they, it can be in a rock, which I collect those. I have had people collect those for me and I'm hoping to do our fireplace back here with uh, heart rocks all over it. And my husband's gonna do a design, but that's on the honey-do list. You know how the honey-do list goes? It goes, okay, a long list for our hubbies. So, um, and a project I should learn how to do myself, you know, but my list is long too. But anyway, um, so I, any different way that he wants to show me, I just felt like I've seen it and with the leaves and even my friends are so sweet. They'll send me pictures like, look what I saw and did this. And that's just a reminder. That's how I use my reminder of that. He loves me. Jesus loves me. We think about the song. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. And so that's what I wanted to speak to you about is love. So 
Whew, how do you love and you're not feeling so loved? Or you're not feeling so loving? Well, it's a feeling, right? So love is an action. It's not about, oh, I'm this way or that way, because we're people, we're human. We're like that all the time. We are living in, um, in a gray area all the time. That means we're living very lukewarm all the time, yeah. I'm calling you out, I'm calling myself out, okay? We need to be black or we need to be white, okay? And that's no reference to color, okay? Because I would, I, look at me, I, I'm, I'm between colors here. So, um, so we need to be one way or the other, God says, and that's what we're calling out, okay? So loving is an action. We love because God first loved us. He loved us first, so we have this power to love back. It's not a choice, y'all. Yes, we use it as a choice, okay? So, guess what? The first time I got married, I've been married twice, and this is my second marriage, and love, 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 I love him. He's amazing. Uh, my first marriage I married, I will call myself out here for lust. I did. He was a bodybuilder, looked physically good, and, and you know how I love fitness, been doing this all my life, and, um, and that was my first attraction to him. <laughs> And that is not good. I'm not laughing. I'm laughing in embarrassment um, because that's what I did. I looked and even beyond my marriage to him. I mean, when I dated guys, I just, I lustily looked for them. And that is really one of the opposites of love. You're not supposed to do that. It's love. So, um, so definitely I married him and had four amazing kids out of that marriage. And uh, there's not regret through that. I mean, we grew in love and then we grew out of love because of a lot of infidelity and a lot of the crazy, uh, things that went on in our lives. But I have these amazing kids and I have four birth kids and I have three with my second husband that we share. So we have seven total. Yay. Five, five girls and um, two boys. So in this word and love, and I was just really reflecting this morning and praying on love and how I was going to share with you and how God wants me to share. There isn't going to be just like, okay, today's about love, tomorrow's about joy. I have no idea, okay? God could talk about love all week with me and I could be sharing these instances and examples and daily doses of encouragement for you too. So when love, when I, when he wants me to jump to the word joy, we'll jump to the word joy for the fruit of the spirit. So right now it's about love. So as I'm reflecting and praying, you know how the enemy just enters your head and these are the fiery arrows i call them well they say in the bible too but they finally just fired at me and i've been back here four months okay i have six kids that live here in michigan okay my seventh lives in well down south okay slash border of tennessee anyway so in that time i have hardly seen my kids now it's a two-way street yes so my woe is me moment was, I'm barely seeing my kids. I'm seeing my latest the most, I mean my latest. My second daughter in line, my third oldest, because she had a baby. His name is Romeo, hello, love. Um, and I get to see her the most, and she's a treasure, let me tell you. But when I fly here soon, which is really drive, because we live our full-time RV in, um, I'm not gonna get to see her. I'm not gonna get to see him for like maybe seven months. I don't know. We travel. We're, we're we're apostles for Jesus. We're on the road missionaries. So, you know, and maybe we'll get to sneak back. I don't know. Most of it's gonna be like video phone calls and stuff like that. Then my other kids, you know, oh wow, they're busy. They're so busy with their lives. Two of my girls went back to college. One of U of M. Woo -woo. One of um, Michigan State. I got to cheer for both of them. <laughs> anyway, and then, um, and, and my son, uh, he works a lot and all this. So anyway, so I had this woe is me moment this morning. Love, love. I'm like, how am I going to talk about love? I'm not feeling very loving or loved right now by my children. And I have this woe is me, you know, fiery arrows. And then God reveals to me this verse, <laughs> this verse. And it's not even in Galatians, okay? He points me to Matthew. That's why it's so important to pray and know your scripture because, or, and ask him, where do you need to reveal something in me? I mean, some days I'm like this, hello, and turn to a chapter, and then he just puts it in there. It's crazy. But the closer you grow in the relationship with the Lord, he will show you these things though. So having the Holy Spirit in you is what we need because this is our, our telephone communication here between us and God. Jesus. So relationships with Jesus. That's how God wants it. So he brought me to this verse. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And I was like, okay, what you saying? I'm wicked? Oh, 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 oh. 
And I had to ponder and think about that because I cannot say that I've never been wicked. Okay, I don't mean like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'll get you, my pretty. You little dog, too. That wasn't even a good version. I can do it way better. But I'm not saying like that, but I've had wicked moments, thoughts, where the, where the enemy just wants to twist things around in my head. And the woe is me moment, I was going, that was wickedness. I shouldn't be wickedly thinking about myself, okay? Because that's not love. And then it says, the love of most will grow cold. So is my love growing cold? Is their love growing cold? Or, I, I, I don't know. But is it me? So, so then he reveals, so I'm just like, okay. I have to take responsibility in this. If I'm going to be a transforming person, if I'm going to be continuously working to be a warrior, and I have to, I have to work through my warrior ways. So I don't look at this and blame it on somebody else. I don't BS. That means blame shift onto somebody else. I'm like, okay, God, are you saying I'm having wickedness moment here, and that my love must be growing cold? I can't blame that on anyone else. I can't say, oh, it's my kid's fault that we're not communicating or we're not you know, uh, spending time together because busy, busy, busy is everybody's B, right? So, but then I read, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I'm like, saved? Okay. Mm. I love competition, okay? I thrive on it. Pence and heck, part in this, we're, gonna, we're doing a muck and mud run at the end of September, right here on this beautiful property of Camp Mishawana, where I temporarily live with my hubby and a wonderful family across the street, the Monacos. We travel together. It's amazing. Um, and so, and our fabulous neighbors, love, love, love. I'm about to mention one of them here in a second. So, we're having a muck and mud run. I love competition. I love, and it's not for me. It's for everybody else. I love watching even competitions. So, it's super cool like that. I'm even going to a football game today because I love watching people compete. It's fun. It's fun. fun. That's why I gym because I compete with myself at the gym. I don't compete with anybody else. Don't compare myself to anybody else. That's why I do these things. So, the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Oh, oh, I'm worrying up on this. I'm armoring up on this. I'm like, really? Really here? Huh. Stand firm to the end. Oh, I got this. I got this. I love it. This is a call out to me to stand firm. Oh, I'm going to stand firm. Firmer. Er, 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 er. I'm going to stand the firm est. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stand firm to the end and I'm going to be saved. So, where's I'm calling you out to? We got to keep our armor on, okay? And this is part of that. And when I read this, Yes, I have these wicked moments. I'm like, eh, what was me? Wah, wah, wah. And then I'm like, the love of most welcome cold. Ugh. So maybe my love's grow cold. I know that I see it. I see people's love grown cold all the time. I know I'm sure my children's love is grown cold because we're all fallible. We're all, we're all sinful. We live in sin every day. We are sin. I'm having a sinful moment when I'm reading this. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I want to share my sweet, sweet neighbor. Pausing on that. So, you know, one of my, one of my, I've got these little issues in my life and one of them is some past neighbors uh, um, that I've, I've had to have some moments with and deal with and, and really it's all in prayer because I haven't even spoken to him about it, but I'm having some moments in my head about it and I'm dealing with some, I need to have some love, love your neighbor. And so in my head, I'm just like, hmm, because we still, we still own a home and I've got some neighbors in our neighborhood that, um, that there's a ones that I'm really needing to pray for okay so just a moment it's just a little little hiccup in that moment and so um no more details than that so I love I want to love love on my neighbors and this is why God's showing me all this too because I've got to love 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 because love can grow cold okay so my sweet neighbor across the street here Laura adorable brought over so Doug and I, we do love honey. Okay, so we are strictly meat eaters and there's like a percentage that I, I, I eat honey and a very small percentage that I eat fruit, like 1%. But when I do, it's a certain kind, like berries and cherries. Oh, cherries are so good here in Michigan. Sweet cherries, I don't know if you tried them. So she brings over her honey to me and it's called Desert Queen Honey. She got it in Arizona. Now I do believe we should be eating the honey within our home because of the whole that's a, that's a health thing, but it's because the pollination and it's healthier for you and eat your own hometown honey, but I do like to try other people's honey. So I, she brought over this honey to me and donated to me two jars I got. You know how expensive honey is? That's crazy, but it's so wonderful. But I was, I got to bless her with something back, so that was super fun. And she's like, you don't have to do that. I'm like, no, this could be the future. Let's practice trading now. I love trading. So I, everyone trade, let's trade. I love to trade. So it's like Indian, like, to me in a way, even though it's warrior like, there you go. So, um, fur trades, remember all that. So we, so I was like, well, I want to trade you something back. So I gave her something. So anyway, um, but mostly it's about her cause she gave me this miss Laura over, over here. So I'm like, I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to see what this tastes like. 
And so, whoa, this is my little finger going in there because I was like, going to lick it. And I'm like, look at that. Okay, it's, it's hard. It's hard, y'all. It's hard, okay? It's hard right there. Hmm. Hmm. Does this relate anywhere to you guys? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Okay. Have we let our love grow hard? Oh, we have. Yes, we have. And we, the wickedness has entered in. And the increase of wickedness. Now, wickedness, let's go with this. Wickedness is sin in everything. Are you dabbling here, dabbling there, doing this, doing that? Little funzy drink here, funzy drink there. Okay, you shouldn't be drinking. Okay, I'm going to call you out. Don't drink. We don't need to be drinking. Life can be found in the Word. And when you get in the Word, you will bleed out the fruit of the Spirit. I promise you that. Joy and peace and patience. And yes, it's a challenge. Like I'm having my own little challenge this morning. But I rent to the Word because that's what we're supposed to do. Line our thoughts with the Word. Take our thoughts captive with the Word. And I went in there and God showed me this. And I'm like, whoa. And then my neighbor, my beautiful neighbor across the street said, well, she wanted to donate honey. But look at this. This is what this reminds me of. This is hard. It's crystallized. Okay. Have you let your love crystallize? See, with my moment I was telling you my first set of neighbors, I've let my love crystallize with them because there's too many things that have happened and then I'm not happy about. But I gotta let mm, keep praying, keep praying for your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Your neighbors isn't just your next door neighbors, they all. It's everybody. Everybody, no matter if they make you mad or not. No matter if they I don't know, whatever they've done to you, we gotta love them. So here we go. We don't want to be like this. So then this is what the honey should look like okay so this is look at this honey y'all oh let's just i want to drop it on my fingers but i'm going to drop it in the lid instead but um i thought about putting it on my on you know in my mouth but that would probably be disgusting in front of y'all but look at that sappingly sweet look at the love right here this is love pour it out love okay this is how we need to be. We need to be so sticky sweet. Sticky. I'm going to lick it. Oh, mm, mm. that's really good before a workout too. Getting a little burst of honey, real sugar, not fake sugar or any other sugar. But this is how we need to be, sappingly sweet. So God's reminding me of this. He, this comes over here and of course, you know, I'm not done with my lesson yet because the Lord shows me the scripture, but he needs to give me a physical needs to show me a visual. So that's when my sweet neighbor, Laura, comes over, neighbor, and then brings over honey, and then her honey's hard, right? And then we come to our honey that's already here, which is savingly sweet. So this is just showing you we need to make sure we are sappingly sweet and we're not hard honeying people or things or our own selves. We can crystallize our own selves, y'all. We can become... We, we can either be sappingly sweet honey or we can be hard in ourselves, in our character, in our personalities, how we speak, the rough speaking. I mean, sometimes I, I'm sure I, 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 I've come across rough when I've not meant to or I've said something and somebody might have perceived it wrong. You know, I'm not perfect with my words. I'm just not. But you know what? That's why we have sappingly sweet love for each other because that's part of forgiveness, right? And that's why we keep on loving everybody. And if, if, if somebody's offended you, ask them about it. Hey, I think you said this and we kind of sound like this. And, eh. and that's the only way we can do it. But if you harbor it, guess what? The bitterness grows. And then guess what? The hardness is there and it doesn't take much to get hard like this. But it takes a lot to get like this because you don't have to do to hard, unharden that honey. I either have to put it in like water of some sort like boiling water and let it um you know start to fall that way or i you know when we when we move off here we're going to a hotter states so that will definitely uncrystallize itself but i have to work at unharding myself and that's why we read the scripture every day because that's what we need to do to unharden ourselves to be sweet like honey now my husband loves honey like we make fun of him because he puts honey on everything and so i have to read you these wonderful scriptures about honey um and here's, this is how we're going to relate ourselves as well. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Yeah, that's how we need to be, like honeycomb. Ooh, I have some honeycomb in my refrigerator. I could have showed you that. And sometimes I just like to take a little piece and nibble on it because it gives you a little burst of energy. And guess what? It's real. It's real. It's not the fake stuff. Here it is. 
Proverbs 25, 16, have you found honey? Eat only what you need, that you not have it in excess and vomit it. So that's right. I could overdo on honey. I could overdo on a lot of things. We can overdo on many things in life. And that's why we're all sinners, because we've overdone and sinned them. So this is about love, warriors, and my love for you is the words that I've shared today to encourage you because they are encouraging me too. I mean, God spoke it through me of what I needed. That's why I want to share with you so that hopefully you'll find some encouragement in that. Well, thank you so much for joining me on a daily dose of encouragement. Warriors, bold, brave, and beautiful. Stay fierce. See you until next time.